stock images, Photoshop, influencer advertising. Everyone is doing it, but does that make it right? Thank you so much for joining us today. I am M Connections Principal Strategist, Julie Holton, with me today um, to share their thoughts on winning trust, gaining credibility, but without breaking the bank on your marketing budget. Paul and Adam, thanks for joining me, guys. Let's introduce yourselves. Paul, let's start with you. Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Schmidt. I'm the owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And I'm Adam Suter. I'm the co-founder of 360 Photo and Design. Paul, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, let's get right in. Um, today, we're going to talk about one of the hottest buzzwords this year, authenticity. Specifically, we're going to talk about authenticity in design, which, of course, you two both know a lot about working in video and photography. So um, let's, let's talk about this a little bit here. I want to ask each of you first, what does authenticity mean to you? Paul, let's start with you. Well, authenticity means getting right to the core the core mission, the core value of what an organization is, showing the people, the stuff that they do on a daily basis, you know, just being real, just uh, just showing who they are and what they do and why they do it. That's just basically what it boils down to is just showing the company in action. Mm -hmm. Adam, over to you, what does authenticity mean to you at 360 Photo and Design? It really comes down to showing who you are as a business and showing that best side. Uh, like Paul said, telling the story right. Um, and if a, a company is trying to connect with their audience, people really want to know who they really are. And so doing things, uh, showing the parts of them that, that really tell the story the best, that really helps them to, to be authentic and to be true to themselves and showing people really what it is and being kind of that transparency and that honesty. Okay, I like what you're both saying. You're both talking about storytelling, that transparency. Um, I did a search because we talk about authenticity a lot at M Connections, and I was curious how often we've mentioned it in our blogs this year. And sure enough, eight times we have blogged specifically about authenticity. So um, my suspicions were confirmed. You could say we think it's kind of important at MC, um, and for all of the reasons that you both have mentioned. So, um, I, you know, I want to talk about this from a marketing aspect. Authenticity addresses a major pain point for consumers, and that is a lack of trust. And when we when we talk about social media, specifically the, the influencer marketing that goes on, the market is really flooded with fake pictures of reality. So people are really craving that genuine connection, which brings us to this topic that we debate quite a bit between the three of us, and that is stock photos and stock video. So guys, together at the same time, yay or nay on stock? No, none. No. <laughs> okay, Adam, that, that was pretty defined. Um, you go first. Uh, why? That was a very, very hard and fast no. Why no to stock? Because stock is a missed opportunity. It's telling somebody that, you know, you don't trust your brand enough to share it with them, to be honest with them. And so you've got this image that they may have seen maybe a dozen other times or another brand is using that. And so you lose an opportunity to really show who you are, to set yourself apart and um, that people see it. They recognize a stock photo right away. Customers have become very savvy. They see when things don't, they look a little too polished. They look a little too glossy um, and then they, they recognize it and then you've lost, lost the trust of it. So that's where the authenticity comes into it. It's really about building trust. Paul, what do you think? Do you agree, especially when it comes to video? Do you use stock video? What do you think? I agree with what Adam was saying uh, almost completely. I mean, the, it is a missed opportunity. Not only that, it's a missed connection. It's a kind of missed connection point between you and the people you're trying to serve or the people you're trying to reach because, you know, when it comes to that stock look, People are like, is that really who I'm going to be dealing with? Who am I going to be dealing with? And like Adam said, you miss that opportunity of showing who's there. Who are you going to be connecting with? Now, on our end, there are moments where due to legal reasons, there might be something that we can't, we can't get. So we have to use stock in that regard. But 
that is that is just um, just a filler. What we're trying to do is just use the people that are there as much as possible, and that's exactly where the authentic part comes in. And for those of you who are watching us live on Facebook, we want to hear from you too. So if you agree or if you disagree, chime in and let us know your thoughts as we as we talk through this. So, okay, so Paul, you you were just saying that maybe as as filler. Um, and Adam, I want to jump back over to you to talk about Photoshop because when we're talking about authenticity and like, okay, so let's say I, you know, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid and I am, I'm all in, I'm, I'm getting rid of stock photos. I'm developing, you know, these, these custom tailor-made pictures of my team, of my business. Where, where's that hard and fast line or is there one when it comes to Photoshop? What about touch-ups? What about whether it's blemishes or what if, what if it's like a background change? What do you think about Photoshop? Uh, I think that Photoshop can be useful to remove distractions that don't change who you are as a person. So uh, removing a, a wrinkle or a, a pimple is different than putting your head on Arnold Schwarzenegger's body. You know, so there's a, definitely a line on who, you know, where you take Photoshop. Uh, and, you know, you're going to have changes to things. You're going to have things that, that will distract from the message that you're trying to convey. And as long as you don't change the message, you know, with putting, you know, if you say, hey, I'm, I'm, I've got a photo of my property, but it's really in, you know, you, the background is Hawaii, you know, well, that, that's an opportunity lost. That, that's just being dishonest. And I think that that kind of Photoshopping is, is not appropriate. But to smooth things over, to remove blemishes, to remove distractions, I think is totally useful and necessary. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bug you a little bit more on this. So moving, I get what you're saying about distractions versus blemishes. Sometimes I think about touch-ups in Photoshop, like we're supplementing our lighting for better lighting by brightening up a photo, or maybe some better camera angles. Am I going a little too far? What What do you think? I mean, how how much is too much, and yeah, why? And then tell me why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's more work to do it in post. So if you've got, you know, you have this, this moment in time that cannot be recreated with better conditions uh, or, you know, it's a cell phone photo that that's all you could do to it. And the, and the best thing you can do is to, to brighten up some things and maybe touch up some person who was photobombing you in the background. You know, if that's got to go, again, that's a distraction. But it didn't change the message. It just removed the distraction. So that's really where Photoshop is useful to me and to... Uh, to the clients that we've had, um, and and as far as you know, just just not lying to people. <laughs> That's I'm big about not not doing something that it wasn't really you. Paul, I'm going to jump over to you. What do you what do you think? What about for video? And I know you can do a lot of post editing with video. Do you? Does your team do a lot of post editing? Where where how do, how does Introduce feel about that? Well, um, to be honest. Well, first of all, I lost Adam, so I didn't hear what he had to say. Um, and so I'm guessing that, uh, well, first of all, what we do in video editing is we enhance the picture, but that's, that's about it. We, we, we shoot in a way that we can enhance the picture um, visually wise, but we don't really change uh, how it's going. You know, we don't really, you know, mess with it in a way that's you know uh distracting or mm, looks a little little false but um for the simple fact that and what we really focus on is what the story is the authenticity of the story so um like i said i i didn't get a chance to hear what adam had to say i lost him there but um but yeah uh, i mean for us it is really about um focusing on that story and we, you know, you got to make the picture look good. Um, and we shoot our stuff in a way so that we have the chance to enhance the colors, the vibrancy. Um, but we don't really add too much. Um, and there's, there's, there are some times where we have to take something out that's distracting, but that doesn't really, uh, deter from the overall feel and look of what's being said about, um, what the organization is doing. 
So now you mean like if there's a light switch that's kind of a distraction off to the side, maybe it's not yep. the perfect set. Okay, that's the kind of thing. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's more cosmetic. It's cosmetic okay. in a way that we find something slightly distracting. It may just be distracting to us. It may not be distracting to other people, but it, for us, we want to make sure that the image looks great and it's and it's framed appropriately. And um, and But we do want to make sure that we're not overdoing it so that you're focusing on the on stuff that's really not important but what's being said and what's being told and frankly we know that we are our own worst critics mm -hmm. right our, our clients are always going to be way more critical of how they look in photos and video than anyone else in their audience is going to be um, and so that's something I know that we all work through with our clients. I mean, even even for us going on Facebook Live, we were saying right before we went live, like we're used to being behind the camera. We're not used to being out there in front of the camera mm -hmm. talking live to people and knowing that there's you know the spotlight on you. Um, and so that's one of the things that I know both of you coach your clients through. Okay, so I wanna talk about um, LinkedIn specifically. And Adam, I know you have some thoughts. We've talked about this before on uh, maybe the glamor headshots or the 80s headshots that we might see on LinkedIn. What are your thoughts on authenticity when it comes to headshots specifically? Well, I see a lot of people who they have their, uh, you know, their, 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 their headshot on their little icon. Um, they're really, uh, they did a lot of polish to it. It's in a studio. You can you can see it, but it doesn't look like them because now they're talking and they're doing video uh, or they're showing pictures of themselves. And those two things don't look anything alike. You know, so you really are presenting a, a, something to somebody that you really can't tell um, that it's really them. So I would say authenticity in headshots is more important. So get out of the studio, uh, get into an area where you're working and get an opportunity like we do for our clients. We try to uh, photograph them in their environment, really showing that it's part of the story. You know, so if you know they're uh, a doctor or a professional, you know they're working in that field. If they're a construction worker, maybe it's the picture on site. If it's a real estate agent, uh, have a house in the background. You know, something outside doing their job. So, and then, and then if they're doing pictures of themselves or themselves at the property, then that there's not a big disconnect. Uh, between those two things anymore. That's an interesting thought there. Paul, I want to jump over to you as well. So Adam, you were just talking about studio versus environmental for a backdrop. Um, Paul, I know you have a studio. It's a great green screen. We we use it for our M Connections team, depending on, on the topic and, and what we want our audience to be focused on. Um, how do you feel about, like, how do you help your clients make that choice, that decision between the environmental shoots that you do and a green screen? Well, it really boils down to what do they want to say? Um, how do we want to put them in a, what, what situation do we want to put them in? Uh, for the most part, when, when you want to talk about your organization as it, as a, as a rule, you want to do something in which you're showing it in action. You're, you're in action. You're, you're, uh, um, you're, you're seeing it, uh, as it as it happens day to day now when it comes to thought leadership that's when you get a little can get a little bit creative because you know you can put yourself in front of a green screen and just have a graphic or whatever behind you so on and so forth you're you're uh, you're putting yourself in a different situation in which people are really focusing on you but you're making it a little bit more dynamic than just a little bit of a talking head so to use m connections as an example we've done two styles of videos in with in in that regard just to use you as an example julie in which oh. we we uh we did a promo for you guys where we were someplace where you guys were interacting show you, the staff was interacting showing you guys at work you know in different situations and then also we shot you guys in front of green screen to talk about certain topics and thought leadership and having it look a little snappy, this and that. Those are choices. They're not, they're not um, end all or be all. And sometimes we're in situations where uh, someplace, somebody doesn't have an office or somebody doesn't have a huge staff and, um, but they want to put themselves out there and as a thought leader and, you know, using the green screen as a very uh, key tool. It's not something you should, use all the time, but we use it for our own thought leadership here at Unaduce 
uh, in that regard. And that's how we really use it for video blogging slash thought leadership in that regard. Um, you don't always have to do it that way. You can sit in behind a desk and have like, like your background now um, right here. You could use it as that, but that's how we typically use it for. We don't, it's not, we use it as, as a tool, the green screen as a tool for um, situations. It's completely situational. Which, which totally makes sense. Um, you know, as you're talking about it there, I, I want to jump over and talk also about specifically the social media influencers that we were talking about, because businesses today are really competing. Their messaging is competing with everything that's online. And when we're talking about social media and, and we were just talking about the environmental um, reality, the authenticity, um, you know, I really want to expand on, on this idea of brand ambassadors. They are everywhere, both paid models and people who are genuinely using and repping the products. And it's not just on Instagram. It's widespread across social media. We've seen it for years in, in TV and movies and, and the placement marketing. So it's this whole concept of keeping up with the Joneses. But I think it's on steroids on social media. So um, Adam, how can businesses, let, let's start with you. How can businesses really stand out in that sea of, um, of, of kind of mess, this, you know, this sea of, of content on social media while still remain, how do, how do we stand out while still being authentic to who we are? Well, I think you stand out by being authentic because there are so many companies out there who are um, not local, you know, they're, they're either in another country, they're in another part of the, uh, our country. Um, and if you want to make a local connection, especially for our local businesses, uh, showing who you are, showing that you're, you know, you're on Michigan Avenue if you're <laughs> in Lansing. Uh, if you're um, serving this population, uh, using a stock photo, that's another problem with the stock photo is, is that you, you're losing that opportunity to show, hey, I'm here. I'm serving the community. And I think that's how you stand out. Um, by showing really that you're you're here to, to, to do that. Now that doesn't mean that you can't ha have somebody who uh, looks good and represents your brand well and shows off your products in your place of business. You know that's where I think influencers can benefit from things. And that's why hotels use them. They you know they have these people who come in and they take pictures of their property, doing things in their property, and I think that's why it's become popular because people understand that hey, this isn't just a property that this brand owns, it's this property and it's this store. So we work with, you know, national chains of cell phone stores where they could get, you know, one of their best looking buildings photographed and just put that everywhere. Yeah, that's an authentic picture of their brand, but is it in the community? You know, is the, the Big B next door that, that people go to that they, they see, you know? And so that's really, I think, the best, the best thing. You stand out by being authentic. Absolutely. And Adam, I just threw up a, a comment from Catherine Trustane. Catherine, thank you for, for jumping in here. She says, you stand out by being authentic, which is what you just said, Adam. Thank you. And then another comment from Catherine here is serve the community. That is such a great point. I actually want to, um, to, to talk about that for a minute because both Paul and Adam, I know both of your companies um, as well as M Connections, we are all very actively involved in the community. In fact, Second Brain Collective, our non-agency that we have, um, we we put on a monthly networking event called the Drinking Lunch that happens the, the third Thursday of every month here in Lansing. And so serving the community is a big part of who we are and what we do. So Paul, why don't you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, put you on the spot here. Talk about that and why that is so important and the difference between throwing up a, maybe a, a photo or a post on Facebook that looks like you're involved in the community and actually authentically being ingrained in the community. Can you talk about that a little bit, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, being part of the community is really has always been very important to me because this is a place where you live, work, and play. These are folks you're going to run into on a regular basis, um, whether or not you're in a large city or you're in a smaller mid-sized city like what we are. And not only that, but being a good being a good steward and part of that community boosts your own authenticity um, because you're out there, you're doing things, you're helping people, you're working with organizations, you, you are putting on events, 
Um, and you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're being a part of the positive infrastructure that's building the, the city that you're, that you choose to be in. And, and that's, that's, what's important is the fact that, um, we, we're all interwoven through here and it's like, well, if you want this place to go positive, you got to be a part of that positive fabric. And, and that's what, you know, I chose to do and, and, you know, and founding the drinking lunch and, uh, you know, and being part of the organizations that, that I'm a part of, as well as the community that my company choose to work in. And so it's about, yeah, it's about, you know, like Melissa just said, boost your, boosting your own authenticity. That's exactly what it boils down to. Because if you want to be taken seriously um, and you want to take others seriously, you got to, you, you know, you've, you've got to be, you've got to be authentic. Yeah. And I think that just playing off on that a little bit, it's you build, boost it by being your best self. I mean, as we become better business owners and better stewards of our community, uh, that boosts our authenticity. And so it's not just about, you know, I'm who I am and that's, that's my way or the highway, but it's showing who you, the best you and being authentic to your best self, not necessarily how you got out of bed in that morning. <laughs> I love that, Adam. Catherine says, this is the place you live, work and play, be a part of the fabric, be engaged. And she is so right. Adam, you are so right. Like be your best self. Like I love that um, because we often think like, okay, does authentic mean that, um, that I have to like show every little thing? Like if I have a, a stark white office, do I, do I have to put that out because that's authentic to my brand? Like <laughs> Adam is, is, is highlighting his office behind us. I'm, I'm playing, um, TV director here, so bear with me on the shot. See, like, well, Adam, your office is this nice, crisp, clean, white, polished look, but like, like overhead fluorescents, like some offices are just better not to be shown, <laughs> right? And, we, and we've talked about that. So we're not saying that you have to like, show us what your, you know, your kitchen area looks like if the dishes aren't done. We're saying like, show your the best version of you. That is what is authentic to you. And Paul, you you do this a lot. Um, I, you know, I wanna ask you about the storytelling aspect because Uno Deuce is a video storytelling agency. So can you talk about what that means as far as the authenticity? How do you tell that story by what Adam just said, showing your best self? Well, it's like I said at the beginning, um, you have to use and you have to put yourself out there as an organization, as a staff, you have to, you, you have to like use the folks that have used your services. You, you've got to weave the fabric. Like I keep saying weave the fabric, like that's what I'm doing, but um, God, you're like weaving a story here. Uh, no, it's just like it's just you know it's craft work. It's craft work. It's uh, wordsmithing. But, uh, like it. but um, it's just you know it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but it's just that it's really simple. It is very simple. Who who do you work with? Who works with you? How do you want to get people to understand who you are? And it's just about using the people that are there. That, you know, um, and that's what it boils down to. You can't tell a story of an organization by going outside of that organization. It's got to come from within. And that's the that's the best way that and that's how people are going to trust you, because it's like, oh, this is the actual CEO or, oh, this is somebody who's really out there doing this or, whoa, that's my neighbor. They they worked with them. I mean, these are the things that are touch points that people are going to connect with, and that's where you build that trust uh, with the audience just by telling your story. That's that's it. That's what people want to know. They want to know. They don't want to know exactly what you do, but they want to know why and how they can help. And that's and that's where you need to really um, pinpoint where your audience is. Yeah, I like that too about telling people why you do what you do. People want to know. That's what uh, consumers want nowadays. They want to know why you make this thing, why you do this thing. And that's the whole authenticity thing, explaining that to them. 
Absolutely. And as we always talk about the, you know, the three pillars to know, like, and trust a brand. And so how do you even start that first part of that, the no part, if you're not being who you are, people don't get to actually know you. Okay. So um, before we wrap up here, um, we're going to give our final thoughts in just a moment. But first I want to throw it out there. If anyone watching has any questions, thoughts you want to weigh in on, go ahead and, and write your, your, your um, questions down and we can see them. Connections build trust, Melissa says. Yes, thank you, Melissa. So if you have any, any questions, um, throw them on there and I'm, I'm going to give everyone a chance to wrap up here with their final thoughts. And then if we have any questions here at the end, we'll go ahead and take them. And Catherine says, consumers want to know why you do what you do. Absolutely. Okay, so... Um, Let's give our final thoughts here. Um, Adam, what are your final takeaways for our audience today? Uh, I think I just want to talk, touch a little bit about your About Us page. You know, people want to know you. So if they go to your website and they click on About You or About whatever that is, and you've got a stock photo there, uh, you have lost to them. Uh, I think if, if you take nothing else away from this, Stop putting stock photos on your About Us page. If you got it somewhere else, okay, if you're trying to tell a story, you got a visual that you use in a blog post, you know, whatever. But on that About Us page, do something genuine. Even if it's a cell phone photo, even if you don't hire us to take professional photos of your people, of you, uh, which you should, but <laughs> even if you don't do that, at least <laughs> make that to be as genuine you as possible. That, that is your About Us page, that's your opportunity. You know, if you can show them off, show your space, you know, even if it's like, hey, here's where we came from, here's where we're at, you know, this is this is what where where we're doing these things from, then you make that personal connection with people. So show your office, even if it's a crappy photo, it's better than a stock photo. I like that. Show who you are. You're totally right. On an about page, a stock photo, I think we're all gonna think twice about that now. Okay, Paul, what is your final advice for us? When it comes to being authentic, um, I hope I'm not repeating Adam because, like I said, I haven't been able to hear what he's been saying. But uh, um, it's been just, super good, Paul. Super what's good. That? It's it's been really good. You're gonna love the replay. <laughs> I bet. I bet that's gonna be awesome. So, but that's 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 about that's about it. Is like probably what he said. It's just like be you. Understand where your company is, what you're trying to do, and just insert you, you, the people you work with and the people you work for in as much imagery as you can, um, get their voices, get their, you know, get their feedback. You know, you, you can't really stand out if you're part of the noise. Um, and that's what stock getting caught up in a lot of stock photo and stock video can do. It's just a, like Adam said, it's you, you get, you get, you become part of the noise and you need to stand out. So what makes you special? And that's what people will really hang on to. I, I really love that, Paul. What makes you, you? And as Adam said earlier, you're telling the best version of you is what makes you authentic, especially online as we're, as we're sharing our stories and talking about who we are, communicating to our audience, why they should choose us, why they should choose our business. Um, you know, I'll, I'll add in my final two cents here. So, you know, at M Connections, we really talk with our clients about um, what we call humanizing. And it's, you know, we, we kind of joke about that term because of course we're all humans, but what, what can you do to really show that you are authentic, you are genuine, you are a person just like every other person, you are relatable. People buy from people, whether it's services or products, and so they need that genuine connection to feel that they can trust you. Now, again, that doesn't mean that you need to get too personal or, or become you know, unprofessional in any way, but being able to share that human side, to humanize your business is a great way to connect. And we do that not just through the words that we use, but also through the media, through the images, through whether it's video or, or photography. So being able to connect genuinely, we, we connect through the eyes, we connect through the visuals that we see. And no matter what we think about logic, whether we think that we're someone that makes decisions based on logic, I guarantee you science shows that is not the case. We make 
decisions based on emotion. And so in order to evoke that emotion, you need to have that genuine connection. So my final two cents here, let's jump over now and, and take a look um, at some questions. We had one from, from Catherine Trustane. Let me pull this up here. Catherine wants to know, how would you recommend someone begin to engage in a new community? That's a great question, Catherine. Guys, who wants to take that one first? How do you connect, how do you start engaging in a brand new community? I think the king of networking should take that one, Paul. <laughs> uh, Paul? Is, is Adam talking? Because I, I can't tell. Um, oh, yes, yes. Uh, Paul, Adam says you are the king of networking. He thinks <laughs> this question first. Oh, okay. Well, that basically it. what what I did was just get out. Just get away out of your four walls. Get out there and meet folks. Meet different types of folks. There's all sorts of um, different like meetup.com, uh, Eventbrite, you know, if you're th that type of social person to go, you know, there's these, there's all sorts of groups there, but be but talking and meeting people face to face, you can't be, I know that, you know, for those that have sometimes social anxiety, I mean, I'm, um, I really don't know what to say, but other than the fact that that's what I had to do. And, you know, and since then I've kept doing it because I felt that that's to explaining what I'm, what I do to a person face to face is really easy for me to do. Um, and, and sometimes it's necessary because folks didn't understand exactly what I did and what I can bring to the table or how it could help them or somebody they knew and, and starting those conversations. And if, if you do have social anxiety about going just find somebody to go with you and start from there. Um, but, but getting out beyond your four walls is, is, is really key. And that's, what's interesting about this and this social media online world that I'm telling you to get out of the house and go talk to somebody, but that's never going to fail. Yeah, um, your dad voice is coming out there, Paul, get out of the house. I know, right? No, but no dad jokes, just so you know, no dad jokes, but, okay. uh, but I mean, yeah, that, I mean, but that's, that's, that's it. I mean, I'm sure there's online communities, but at the same time, I think it's, you know, safe to say, you know, if you get out and, uh, you know, like I said, take a friend with you and, and go to something like, hmm, let's see, like the drinking lunch. There are a lot of low key networking activities that are out there that aren't so high pressure. And then you, and also there's ones that are tailored to certain interests. And so, you know, uh, that's where you can build a network. Absolutely. Adam, what do you do? Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. I think if you're the kind of person who doesn't like sales, it's going to be struggle if you if you want to be your own boss. So if we're talking to an entrepreneur who doesn't like sales, then you're really going to struggle. I talk to a lot of people who are like, hey, I, I've got this great thing that I do. I'd love to sell it. Or I'd like to do a lot of it for myself. Like, But then you don't like to do sales. Well, I'll hire a salesperson. But as an owner of a business, you've got to be your number one salesperson. So take the Dale Carnegie classes. <laughs> take the sales classes, you know, these kind of things that learn how to connect with people um, and then go out, like Paul said, go out to those networking events and make a connection with people there. It's not rocket science. It's not something that's beyond those who are brave enough to do it. But Paul gives good fit technique. Take somebody if you really need a wingman um, or, you know, hire somebody who, who can do that for you. If that's really what you want to do, if you've got to that kind of level. But um to begin anew, talk to people, shake hands, learn people, have people know who you are. That's the important thing. I love that from both of you. Um, Paul says, bring a buddy. I like that safety in numbers, but, but it's true. I mean, if you have, if you have a social anxiety or if you just, I mean, I, I'm very extroverted, but sometimes I just don't feel it. <laughs> right. We all get that way. Um, take someone with you and, and help work the room with that person. Or, you know, scope out someone in the room that you can connect with and use that person to help introduce you, especially when you're new. Um, and, and Adam, I love what you said about sales, because let's just call out that dirty S word right now. There is, I mean, what do you think of when you think of sales? I was just talking about this the other day with, with a client in a consulting session, um, because it's a group of women and they really don't think of themselves 
in sales, but we all work in sales. Everyone that's working in a, in a business is working in sales, whether you like it or not. So take that, like that car salesman mentality, and there's nothing wrong with car salesmen. <laughs> just say that. But take that mentality, you know, just right out of your mindset because you're not, you're not pushing something. You're not peddling something. You are offering, you are providing, you are sharing. Think of other ways to think of sales. But yeah. as Adam said, we all have to do it. And so, um, and so just find a different way to think about, about the word sales. Yeah, I've got a way to think well, about it. Before, fun. can I say something real quick? Yeah, Julie? Paul, yes, go for it, Paul. Sorry, Adam, you can't hear you. So I'll, I'll um, you go ahead, Paul. So this whole, this whole session that we've been doing is about showing you how to sell your business. This whole thing is it, you know, being authentic, showing off the authenticity of what you do and who you are, that's helping you with your sales. And it is it pushy? No. Is it, you know, high pressure? No. It's just you, your organization, and what your passion is. And you're sharing that with other folks. And that's selling yourself. Folks want to know that story. And, th and they want to know your story. We all love stories. I mean, that's why television and, and video and movies are still so popular because we love stories. And so you, people want to know yours. And that's, that's what this whole thing is about, just sharing who you are. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Adam, you want to jump yeah, in? I think I was just going to say, if you want to think about sales differently, um, the way I've always thought of what I do is helping people. Like I believe that the photography that I do that helps people be authentic, that helps them tell their story, I believe that helps them. Uh, ultimately, it is a benefit to the community what I do. And so it's selling that idea. It's uh, showing people that what you do for them benefits them. And so you sell the benefits. You don't sell the the widget or the gadget, like how does that thing help people? And that's really what I want to do. I want to help people. And so that's how I think about sales. It changes my mindset on it. Absolutely, Adam. So well said that what you're doing is you're helping people. You're providing value and you're just helping them to connect with you. Um, you guys, great questions. Thank you all for joining us. We are all available to answer any more questions that you might have. Um, Paul, if someone's looking to get a hold of you, what's the best way they can reach you? Well, I can be reached first and foremost at our website, unoduce.com, U-N-O-D-E-U-C-E.com. That's first and foremost. Plus, um, if you want to talk to me elsewhere, I'm everywhere else, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can find me, just maybe not so much the Snapchat. <laughs> you like how I put the the in there? Yeah, the, you know, with the, your the, jokes, the, the snap. The Snapchat. Yeah. By the way, Stephanie Stephanie uh, Barnhill says she wanted the dad jokes, so I think maybe next time, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have a another seminar a webinar just for her on dad jokes. <laughs> or That's... you can just you can just follow Paul directly. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime me. We'll do all the dad jokes. Um, Paul, I'm going to give you a shout out because Paul also has started podcasting, so he has a daily um, video podcasting update. So make sure you follow Paul. Follow Uno Deuce, um, doc, uh, Uno Deuce Multimedia on social media, but also follow follow Paul directly um, for that. And Adam, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Well, I spend probably too much time on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Adam <laughs> David Suter. No such thing. As my, uh, as my thing, on, as my name on, on LinkedIn. Uh, 360 Photo and Design is the website. Uh, 360photodesign.com is the, the URL for it. And... Um, my Facebook and Instagram is, is way too dormant and it needs to be. But, you know, when you're out shooting, it's hard It's hard to have two jobs. And social media is another job. That's why you should hire Julie. Oh, so, yes. Thank you. <laughs> she'll be, like that. She'll for you. Um, so, yeah, uh, check out LinkedIn or at 360photoanddesign.com. 
Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. And you can you can reach me right here on the M Connections Facebook page. Feel free. Any any uh, questions you have, comments, we'll all be looking through this after the broadcast. You can reach me directly, Julie at mconnections.com. And I'm going to throw up there for you our mconnections.com slash blog, because as I mentioned, our team at MC has blogged about authenticity a few times this year. You can also find other marketing related blogs there as well. So guys, Thank you so much for joining us, Paul and Adam. For everyone else, thank you for joining us as well. And we will see you next time. Thanks, guys.